Hello musicians. So I'm blessed with the opportunity to work with piano students from around the world. And a common issue they have is they can play in one key pretty well, but the other keys, they struggle. So I want to share two frameworks I use to help my students play in every key, plus a couple personal stories. All right, so let's get started. So I started playing in a holiness church. And in the holiness church I started playing in, um, they did something called testimonial service or testimony service. They didn't do praise and worship. So testimony service, what that meant was anybody was able to get up and give their testimony and then sing whatever song they wanted to sing. So when I started playing at the church, I had already taken some classical lessons. So I knew how to play the major scale in every key. So I knew the names of all the notes and I knew how to play one church song. And so when I set up my keyboard and started, <laughs> this might started singing, I was like, uh oh. <laughs> First off, what key is it in? I have no idea. <laughs> then what are the chords? And then how do you play along? And so thankfully I had a guitar player with me and this guitar player knew three or four chords in every key. And so I was able to follow along with him and that gave me like the first clue, like, okay, there are certain chords that just kind of work um, and all the time, they weren't right all the time, um, but they were, they allowed me to just start. And so this, that helped me learn this first framework that is learning by concept. So framework number one, learning by concept. So music is a language and just like any language, there are a couple ways to learn it. You can learn it by being immersed in it, just in it and you figure it out or you learn by concepts, so learn by rote, or learn by concept. This first framework is learning by concept, and the second framework we'll talk about is learning by rote. So what does that mean? Well, in any language, let's say you're starting to learn Spanish, or German, or French, or whatever the language is, the first thing you start learning is the alphabet. You get familiar with the letters. So that's akin to getting familiar with the scales, the notes and, and the scales. And then the second thing is words. You start putting the letters of the alphabet together, and you start creating words. This is akin to chords in music. Then you start putting several words together and this creates a sentence. That's akin to chord progressions. Then you start learning bigger words and that's like adding extensions onto your chords. And then you start creating more complex sentences and that's akin to complex chord progressions, songs, and the like. So you see this real parallel. So today I want to focus on that second one, the, the words or the chords. And so I mentioned that I, I knew how to play three or four chords in each key because that's what the guitarist knew how to do. So I just followed him. But those were the, the most important chords of the key. And so I want to talk about those. So let's go to the piano here. So let's say we're in the key of C. All right. So uh, let's play the major scale. C has no sharps or flats in the scale. So... So that's the major scale, right? And so we're going to derive our harmony or the chords or our words from this scale. So let's put our, our thumb on C. Skip the next note on the scale. Go to the third one. Skip this one. Go to the next one. So this is C major. This is a C major chord. And I can do the same thing for every note of this scale. So I can go to D. That's D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and B diminished. Now, we can put a number to each one of these chords. So if I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we're back to C again, which is the one. And so if I played a chord for each one of those notes, this would be the one chord. This would be the two chord. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So basically, in in the, in our major scale, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different chords. And so you might be saying chord. That's a lot of chords. Okay. But here's the thing: there are really three main chords you need to know. The chord built off the first scale degree, the chord built off the fourth scale degree, and the chord built off the fifth scale degree. 
these are what are called your primary chords. So the chord built off the first scale degree in the key of C is what? C, E, G, C major. Now we gotta find the fourth scale degree. So I'm gonna play the C major scale and count. One, two, three, four. So I need the chord built off the fourth scale, fourth scale degree, which is F, F major. And then we need the chord built off the fifth scale degree. So one, two, three, four, five. There we go, G. The G major. So these chords, the one, four, and five, are known as primary chords. Now you notice I referred to them by their number, one, four, and five, instead of C major, F major, and G major. And in music, we do that often. We'll refer, refer to chords by their number a lot of times instead of the name. But it's the same thing. So what's the point of learning the primary chords? Well, the every other chord is a derivative of the primary chords. So if you can play the primary chords, you can pretty much play any song. Now it might not sound perfect, but it's a start, right? So let's say Amazing Grace. Let's take that. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was lost, lost but now Right, and there, I I can do a thousand songs that you can literally play just by knowing those three chords, the primary chords. And then you might be asking, well, Corey, what do you do in the left hand? Well, you can play the root. Amazing grace, how sweet the okay, let's try another song. Hallelujah. 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 So the fourth chord that I generally like to add to the primary chords is the sixth. So one, two, three, four, five, six. A minor. That's a derivative of C. And the sixth is used so much that I always include it when I teach the primary chords. All right, so let's do a couple other songs now that we have the sixth in there. Let's see how that sounds. Let's um, do Thank You, Lord. Three, four. Now, one thing I did um, that I realized I did, I haven't talked about is, so we have the C here, the one, the four, the five, and the six. But this six, I could also play here, because one, two, three, four, five, six. Or I could even play up here. And so you might see me playing that same chord, but maybe in a different octave, right? Um, you thought I was worth baby. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping So you cleaned up inside You thought I was the dark one You sacrificed your life So I could be free So I could be young So I could tell everyone Now you might have noticed there's a couple of chords in there that like, mm, um, but again, we're just starting. This, we're, we're beginning, we're just starting in the key. So everything isn't gonna be perfect, um, but we're developing the framework. Now you might be asking, well, Corey, okay, what about all the fancy stuff? What about all those other chords, those other sounds? When do I learn these? You definitely should be trying to expand your chords once you get these primary chords down in the chord, the diatonic chords of the key. The, these diatonic chords, start expanding them. Start with adding a seventh. Um, and then ninth and 11th and 13th or 6th, those chords will yield different sounds and colors that you've been hearing, but you didn't know how, how, where they were. 
So maybe about six months after I started playing at my church, we had a service at another church. So I went there and um, they had a guy that was playing the keyboard. So I ended up playing the organ. And I didn't know much about playing organ, but I figured I'd just play it the way I play a keyboard. <laughs> and um, so, and service got really high and it went into a praise break. And so I'm on the organ. Well, I, I got onto the organ and I was trying to figure out what key we were in. So I looked at the hands of the musician and he was playing in F sharp. So I played F sharp thinking, okay, we're in F sharp. So I, I played that note. And that wasn't the key we were in. When I figured out what key we were in, we were actually in B. And so I just said, okay, I just played in B. That's what we'll do. And when I say he was wearing that keyboard out, like it was incredible. I I felt bad because I was like, I don't know, but, but three chords in B. Uh, so I'm just kind of doing what I do. And uh, but he was going to town. It was incredible. And so I started feeling really bad about my own playing. Like, man, he is so much better than me. He can play better than me. It's incredible. Um, I just started feeling bad about myself. But then I realized, hey, hey, trust the process. Corey, trust the process. You're learning. And you're learning every key. He's focused on one key. So he's gotten really good at one key, which is fine for him. But you're learning every key. And when you... <laughs> It's going, to, it's going to take a little time, but once you get it, you know, you can play just as well as he can in F sharp, but then if they change keys, you can play that same level in another key. So I was like, okay, just trust the process. Keep growing, keep growing. Learn four chords, learn five chords. I learned six chords in the key. Um, just not, just instead of my primary chords, I learned started learning the diatonic chords of the key. Uh, started learning different passes, and, and, and before long, I was able to play in F sharp, as well as he could, but then I could also play in every other key at that same level. And so the point I'm trying to make is trust the process. I had a student once that struggled with transposing tell me that he was like, Corey, I cannot stop transposing. I have to transpose because churches hire me and they believe I'm going to sound a certain way. So is there a, a short, uh, another way, a shortcut way to learn this? My answer is there's not really a shortcut, but there is a different route. And so I want to talk about that different route. And so this is our framework two, learning by rote. And I'm probably going to call it learning by rote 2.0 because it's, it's a slightly different spin on learning by rote. So this framework simply just says, learn each song in its original key. Now, unless you go to the type of church that I grew up in where you didn't know the song or even the key, most of the time, you're probably going to know the songs and the key. And so learn the song in the original key. Now, where do I get this learning by rote from? Well, let's say you can only play in C sharp. That's your key. You can only play in C sharp, but the song is an E, right? So there are two ways to kind of learn this by rote. Number one is just, just play it in E and just listen to the recording and figure out what the chords are one at a time till you get the whole song. Another thing is, uh, if let's say you're good in C sharp, well, you could play the song in C sharp, right? Let's say this is the first chord, and then figure out what that chord would be in the key of E. So I'm gonna go up a minor third. So that's the same chord in E. So that's the first chord, right? And so let's say your the next chord is this. Okay, well I got to figure that chord out in E. Okay, let's see. Boom, boom. There we go. I figured that chord out. So I have the first chord and the second chord. And so you can go through the entire song doing that. So, so now you can play that particular song, whatever it is, in E. Now, now you're still going to feel uncomfortable in the key of E, for example, because you only can play this one song in the key of E. But you've learned the chords. So you have those chords. But keep going, because the next time you get another song in E. And you'll see, start seeing familiar patterns and you get another song in E. And then you'll start becoming more and more familiar with the key. So it's a shortcut because you can, you learn the song for that Sunday, but it's the long way because it takes you a longer amount of time to become comfortable with the key and learn it. Uh, so which framework should you use? Well, I suggest you use both frameworks. 
framework number one, learning by concept so that you can develop how to play in each key especially because they're foreign to you and you're developing everything you need to, to be able to do to play in that key. But then framework two, um, so you, that you can play the songs that you need to play at the level that you want to play at. So what I've done is I put together a little checklist to help you remember these two frameworks and how to apply them. So all you have to do is click the link in the description box, put your name and email address, and I'll send that right to you. Also, we are on our way to 100,000 subscribers. So if you're finding value in our videos, definitely hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up, the like button, um, and comment your suggestions below for new videos you'd like to see. And lastly, if you need help, if you're trying to figure out what to do next, how do you improve, you're stuck, and just need some help, set up a call with me in the description box below. I have a link to set up a free 15 minute call with me but we'll talk about where you are and how I can help you get to your next level. All right, you all. Well, thank you all so much again for checking out this video. And until the next one, be blessed and happy practicing.